Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh I'm Adam Baka and you are watching Adam's Adventure Okay Today is the 30th day of Ramadan and as the iftar is uh, the Ramadan is over and now currently when I'm um, capturing this video it's already Shawwal. Shawwal means idol victory and the last video that I did was the 18th day of Ramadan and today I will read to you my notes on 19th day of Ramadan and that was the last my last notes because on the 20th day up until today I didn't read uh, I didn't uh, take any notes <coughs> so let's hear about 19th day of Ramadan okay it was Saturday and we went to my father's in-law house for iftar his house is not big as my mother's house as we joined the party it was quite cramped so So my father-in-law, who, who were there in the house? So my my father-in-law, my sister-in-law, her husband, and her daughter from her second marriage. And that husband is the second husband, the first husband divorced. Then another two daughter from her first marriage. She had four child from the first marriage. Uh, carry short <coughs> all together there is 15 of us so yes only 15 but that is the maximum number for the house but if everyone were there there will be 28 of us so 20, 28 people could not fit into the house at once and right now before the iftar uh, they were painting the house what I mean is inside the house even though the main hall uh, they just paint the main hall but that's all it is there are only two rooms but with the kids around it was chaotic everyone including my children tried to help but it can be more messy I don't really know how to describe the, enti in the entire situation. It was fun, but hmm, all of us getting tired unnecessarily. <laughs> because uh, actually we have to manage not just to pin the wall, but to manage the children. <coughs> What's more can I share? Hmm... When it came to Iftar, we couldn't hear the Azan call from the house because the nearest masjid is, is quite far away and the television is plugged off because of the painting. And we breakfast a little bit late, a little bit late, just a couple of minutes late. So after Iftar, they continue painting. It was not done yet, but we have to go back, so we just let they complete the painting job on their own then when we almost arrive at home I need to fill up the car and supposedly buy an ice cream at McDonald's afterwards but at the drive through lane at the drive through lane I think there was at least 25 or more car leaning and as and as I refuel my car, I saw this a couple of car went away from the lane, leaving because it was too long and s the service is quite uh, slow. So I did not buy my children ice cream uh, at 
that day? I think and this actually there's a lot more that I wrote uh, in this note but I don't think that I want to share it with you right now so there is for this note the 90th day of Ramadan and then the 20th day of Ramadan <coughs> what happened to me I woke up early in the morning we had our saho on the 20th day of uh, Ramadan and afterwards I after subuh we start our fasting and I try to get some sleep but I couldn't get that sleep and my wife went to work uh, there's only me and my uh, my youngest uh, child the rest went to school so what happened to me I was stabbed in my stomach by Wolverine do you know Wolverine <laughs> the character from X-Men yeah I got stabbed by Wolverine that's what I feel like uh, what? Wolverine stabbed me it's like there's a tree knife strapped uh, step my stomach it's a, it's actually gastric but this time the ulcer in my stomach most probably there's three spot because I feel like like just what I said I've been I've I feel that I've been stepped by Wolverine <coughs> so at first I I just want to hold on to the pain but a couple I think not even one hour I just couldn't take it anymore it was so bad this is not the first time I I've got this kind of attack uh, so I called my wife because I, I'm not sure whether I can drive or not but even though if I can drive I couldn't take my uh, youngest child with me because of the COVID I want well, I mean that I want to when I want to go to the ho hospital or the clinic to take a jab <coughs> Uh, it happens to me before so the best solution is uh, is actually they will give me an injection to um, what do what you call it uh, to heal to heal the pain way <coughs> but so so because I can take my child with me I call my wife she have to come uh, she can she ha she have to come back from her work <coughs> and it took uh, I think around 30 minutes or 45 minutes and then we went to she went she sent me to the clinic uh, I go to the uh, government clinic and previously when i've got this attack they send me directly to the emergency room so i don't have to wait for my uh, i don't have to wait for the queue i don't have to queue so long <coughs> but this time around they don't send me to the emergency room instead they send me uh, they give like uh, they direct, they wrote something on uh, notes that I have to give to the when I, wa I want to register and then I should go to uh, I, I should I, I'm not <coughs> how do I put it so, uh, it's like a normal procedure it's not like an emergency cases so I have to wait 
even though I've complained a few times, not few times, many times, they just said that I have to wait like other patients. And it was very painful. So ev anyone who have the experience of this kind of gastric attack, you will know. You couldn't really <coughs> uh, stand properly. If you sit, you ev you will feel uh, your body is aching because of your stomach ache, <coughs> because of the gastric. So, um, when my turn comes, I think because I complain too many times, uh, they call me first instead of other patient. There's a lot of room, so the room that I am su uh, supposed to go, I think there should be in a two, uh, two or three other patients uh, before me. But because I already went into the gr the room and complained to the doctor, I am very painful. My stomach really. I think uh, it was supposed to be an emergency case. Uh, I think they give me uh, the way to cut the line, and the doctor said to me that they don't have gastric. Uh, medicine. I then I told her, I've been here before with the same problem, and they give me a jab and they send me directly to the emergency. So and then she called the emergency. Uh, she asked whether if they had uh, a jab for. Gastric and the emergency people say yes they have and it was uh, I'm uh, I don't really get the name of the jab I think it was Serenitidin <coughs> so she asked me to go to she wrote something and then uh, sh I take the notes to the emergency but still I have to queue because there are some other people in the emergency in the emergency room. Uh, I think about five minutes and then they call me up. So when they call me up, the person in charge um, straight away take me into the room and into this one bed. Okay, I lie down and then uh, he say, uh, don't lie down, just take uh, pull out the, the my sleeve and he give the jab and the jab even though uh, I've been given the jab the painful the pain doesn't go away right uh, doesn't go away right away huh. <laughs> so it, it doesn't go away immediately and he asked me if I want to take a nap or lie down, yeah, I see yes, but he asked me to, there's another bed that uh, if I want to take a rest, uh, there's another bed, I go to that another bed, I rest for about, I think 15 minutes, and then actually the pain still, the pain is still there, but my wife is waiting outside the clinic, they, she and, and my youngest child cannot come in, so I think it was. I've been with. Uh, I've been in the clinic for almost two hours. I don't really remember, but because uh, after after that, um, after uh, my jab, I have to take uh, a medicine at the pharmacy, and it took. I think another 15 minutes and when, when I went out uh, go to my wife we have to uh, pick up my third child from school
So my third child, uh, we have to pick her up around 12. So that means that um, I've been in the clinic for around two hours or maybe slightly more. Just waiting. A lot of time uh, I have to wait. And of course, uh, even before I went to the clinic, I couldn't bear the pain. So I already break my fast uh, at home. I try to drink water because there's an advice. Uh, previously, there's an advice. If you get this kind of gastric, you drink 1.5 liter water and then you vomit out because they want uh, the acid in the stomach to go out from your stomach. So that's why they, they advise to do that, uh, that kind of practice. So I didn't fast that day because of gastric. Mm. And, and what's more? This is not something, uh, this is something, why, why I tell you this, because this problem might come if you try to fast or even though you are not fasting, you can get a gastric attack and this kind of attack is, is quite bad. <coughs> uh, so after, after that day, so uh, after that, uh, okay, I went to pharmacy because um, they don't have uh, uh, one uh, one kind of medicine that they don't supply in the clinic, and that is omeprazole. Omeprazole is for gastric. They don't supply. Maybe they are out of stock or something. So I I have to buy that medicine on my own. So I went to the pharmacy and I bought myself an omiprazole. Omiprazole, uh, I should consume that for 14 days. Uh, one day, one tablet or one capsule. So there you go. Uh, a Muslim fasting on Ramadan and, and suddenly I couldn't fast on the 20th day of Ramadan. But on the 21st day, up until today, the 30th day, Alhamdulillah, I managed to fast. I complete, so this year, for this year, I complete 29 days out of 30. And inshallah, I will try to replace that one day that I miss. I will try to replace as soon as possible. So tomorrow, the first sh the first day of Shawal, the Idol Fitri, it is forbidden for any Muslim to fast. Of course, I will not fast tomorrow. Uh, maybe the day after that, I will try. So. For Muslim, if you cannot uh, perform your fasting on Ramadan, you can replace replace the uh, the day that you cannot fast on other day. And let's say if you are very old, uh, you even though it is not uh, don't care whether it is Ramadan or not Ramadan. Even uh, if you cannot uh, perform fasting, there's other way to to what do you say to replace the fasting, and it is called fidya. You have to pay fidya. But that is for someone who really, really cannot perform uh, fasting. You cannot do fasting because of um, their age or maybe because of uh, their health so they have to pay fidya uh, 
Kijah is to feed poor people. One day uh, in Malaysia, uh, I don't really remember how much, but uh, it was around seven ringgit to eight ringgit per day. Means uh, if you cannot perform fasting, you have to pay. It's like a penalty, uh, seven to eight ringgit per day. Uh, but but as I said before, it, uh, it you can that is only apply for someone who really couldn't pass. Okay, uh, so I think I've done my uh, review on first Ramadan up until now today the 30th of Ramadan even though there's uh, a few days that I didn't make any video I didn't I didn't share my experience for the last 10 days because the last 10 days I am quite busy um, and there's not a lot of thing that uh, I can share anymore because the toughest uh, period of fasting is from the first day up until actually uh, until the until the tenth day. So the last ten day is was not um, was supposed not to be yet difficult anymore, and I don't really have anything to share. Except for that uh, 20th day of Ramadan, I got gastric. But other than that, it was uh, it was nothing. So that's all for me. That's all for me now. And inshallah, I will make uh, another video, not on Ramadan. I will make a new video after this. And according to my plan. I will make uh, a, a something that is uh, an exercise challenge. I don't know yet what kind of exercise that I will do and how long is the period. But as you can, uh, as you watch this video, I assume that you can hear that there's a lot of firecracker sound one from the Malaysian tradition when they uh, celebrate Idol Fitri is to play firecracker even though the firecracker is actually illegal I don't know how they how they bought it but I, I can see some people are selling on the street but it is actually illegal for them to buy a firecracker like that. They can buy the small one, that, that one like what they call it, the pop pop and the uh, bunga api. I don't know what they call it in English. Yeah. yeah. That is not illegal, but the kind of, the kind of uh, firecracker that is so loud like that, like a bomb like that, that is actually illegal. <laughs> but nowadays, seriously, not just idle fit tree. Uh, even in Chinese New Year, it starts with Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year, uh, the Chinese people who, who always uh, like to play this firecracker, and then the Muslims start to. I don't know, it's not copying, but the kids just like to play with the firecracker. So uh, every Ramadan, they will start to sell firecracker and they will buy and play. And, and when the kids grow up, probably they are 30, 40 years old, but when it comes to firecracker, they are still kids. <laughs> they are still like kids. I mean, they are still like kids and they play like kids. They don't care whether it is illegal or not, they still want to play. And not just for Muslim, 
uh, even when Deepavali, Deepavali is the celebrations of uh, the Indian people, uh, the Hindu. Uh, the nowadays, I think there's been around four to five years around my place when the when Deepavali comes, they will play firecracker. Previously, let's say ten years or fifteen years before, no, they they never play play it like this. Let like what happened um, r right now. Okay, I think that's for now. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and uh, selamat hari raya Aidil Fitri. See you again in my next video.